Hey folks, back with another video. Let's dive into what stories got my attention today. Starting with Austria. The Austrian, the Austrian police announced on Tuesday that a shooting rampage in Vienna had been carried out by a known Islamist, Islamist extremist who had spent time in prison. Now authorities are probing the motive behind the deadly attack, which left at least four people dead and more than 20 injured. Police have remanded, remanded 14 people in custody who had links with the uh, Vienna gunmen, Interior, Ministry, Interior Minister Karl Nehammer said. Now, it was not immediately clear what the 14 people are suspected of, and under the Austrian law, detention on remand is allowed if there is a risk that the suspect could flee, suppress evidence, or commit more crimes. Hundreds of police have been deployed across Vienna to search for suspects. Now, in coordination with the Austrian authorities, Swiss police on Tuesday arrested an 18-year-old Swiss man and a 24-year-old Swiss man in the city of Winterthur in connection with the Vienna shooting. Now, North Macedonia's interior ministry said in a statement that three people who were involved in the gun attacks all have dual Austrian and North Macedonian citizenship. Now, all three were born in Austria, the ministry added, naming the three only by their initials. Now, one suspected attacker was armed with an assault rifle where, uh, and wearing a fake suicide vest was shot dead by the police. Interior Minister Nehammer told an er on an in an early morning press conference on Tuesday that investigations indicated the man was a sympathizer of the extremist group, the Islamic State. Now he added that more, perp more perp perpetrators may be on the run and urged citizens to stay home if possible. Now I wish the Austrian and the Swiss authorities all the luck in catching all the individuals who provided them with material or financial support to these terrorists. Now I'm going to continue to look into the keep an eye on this story and its development as it progresses. Moving on, the Malabar 2020, an exercise in the Bay of Bengal that included Navy ships, aircraft and personnel from Australia, India, Japan and the United States of America was hosted by the Indian Navy. This year marks the 24th iteration of Malabar, which began in 1992 and once again featured the Royal Australian uh, Navy as it rejoined the exercises, according to a press release from the U.S. Navy. Now, the annual exercises advances the planning, integration, and employment of warfare tactics among participant nations and includes the lethal Harley Burke class guided missile destroyer USS John S. McCain. Quote, India, Japan, and Australia form the core of our strategic partner across the Indo Pacific, end quote, said Captain Stephen DeMoss, Commodore of the Destroyer Squadron 15. Quote, it is fitting to see our navies operate in the high end, tactically relevant exercises like Malabar. It is another opportunity to further strengthen our combined capabilities and enhance our partnership." End quote. Now, This year's exercises at the sea includes a variety of high-end tactical training, including specific interactions that are designed to enhance interoperability among the uh, Royal Australian Navy, Navy Indian Navy, the Japan, uh, Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force and the U.S. Maritime Forces. In other words, things that should be worrying to Beijing. The commanding officer of HMAS Ballard, Commander Anthony Pisani, said the multinational maritime exercises was an opportunity to build the interoperability with Australia's key regional partners such as India, Japan and the United States. Now it is nice to see the Quad working together and hopefully this new alliance builds on to become stronger and resilient and of course becomes a credible deterrence to any future threats in the region. 
moving on to Ethiopia. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said on Wednesday he is sending soldiers into Tigray state to quell an uprising by a rebel group, sparking concern the country could be heading for civil war. The Tigray region has also been placed under a state of emergency. Now it is the late it is the latest challenge to the Nobel Peace Laureate Abiy from the Tigray People's Liberation Front. The ruling party in the Tigray region and now a rebel movement. Now the party held local elections in defiance of the federal government in September. Abe's move Abe's move comes after the group allegedly launched an attack on an army base in the region. Now Ethiopia's Federal Council of Ministers said in a statement that the area was being placed under a state of emergency for six months. The TPLF had long dominated Ethiopian politics, but since taking office in 2018, Abe has been at odds with the elites in Tigray, many of whom he has purged from the government and state institutions. The TPLF, as well as many people in Tigray, do not feel represented by the federal government. Now, there was a military presence in the capital as well. Now, Prime Minister has taken a bold step in calling the soldiers. Now, personally, I am rather, I rather that we solve this problem in other means necessary than violence. But I think that the two sides may be sliding towards a full-on conflict that could get messier. Hopefully, the such an event, such a event does not occur and that some kind of reproach is uh, possible. Moving on into Turkey where a recent earthquake hit the countries in the Aegean Sea, all search and rescue efforts have been declared complete in the western province of Izmir, days after a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake shook the country's region. Uh, the Aegean Sea uh, region on October 30th. Now the death toll from the last week's powerful earthquake in Turkey has risen to 114 according to the authorities. As many as 137 victims are still recovering uh, receiving treatment while 898 have been discharged from the hospitals. It is to be noted that most of the rescuers are volunteers, according to the newspaper Horiat Daily. Now, of course, my condolences go to the bereaved family, and and uh, hopefully they can recover from it and come out and go back to living a regular life. Moving on to the uh, European Central Bank. As, as the ECB is poised to implement in December new measures to support, to support the ailing European economy, the bank's policymaker Pablo Hernandez de Cost said on Wednesday, quote, it is highly likely that in December we will again add monetary stimulus to what we have today, end quote, de Cost told Spanish lawmakers in Parliament. Now I wonder how much more stimulus can the European Union take? Especially with the whole lockdown, I fear we may be heading for an inflationary times as we halt our production and keep printing. That printing of money will go into straight inflation. And I shudder to even imagine what rate that inflation would be. Well, that's it for this video. If you like what like the video then hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for future updates write in the comments your thoughts criticisms and anything i might have missed and i will see you in the next video